Hey guys, it's me to Legit City, and today we're going to be talking about a oxygen non-included mechanic and maybe an, even an exploit depending on how you look at this. This is going to be the infinite spill, infinite pressure water tank. Of course, you could use this water tank for any liquid as right now we're using it to store crude oil. Now, of course, uh, before we go into the designs, uh, there's a couple of uh, caveats about this. And it's that you need to have air flows and a door type that's not pneumatic. But otherwise, you could use this for any type of liquid, but it's only one liquid. You cannot have a mixed liquid tank with this, as the mixed liquid meshes around with the gases in play. And yeah, the other thing is that airflow tiles and doors are the only unbreakable tiles that can't be broken by liquids so you need to have access to those. Now to get in on the design, for the most case, uh, you need to build a design like this with airflow tiles. These four tiles basically could be used to simulate neutronium as you could add this into any liquid geyser to collect all of the resources from it. Now airflow here, airflow at the bottom and on the side all around it, and the only places without airflow is the door. Now you might be wondering why not just put a airflow tile there as well. That's because the gas in these two tiles is actually what allows this to become a infinite pressure tank. Basically the two separate gases right here act as two individual elements, so you do need two gases. Doesn't matter which ones, you just need two. And what happens is, is that since they act as two elements here, the liquids never actually inhabit those two tiles. That causes a specific spill animation for the liquid, which is you can see right here, the crude oil spilling. What actually happens is the crude oil teleports to the bottom during the spill animation, and that happens when you put the two gases there. Now this happens uh, regardless of if this is two tiles or three tiles long. So you could actually extend the spillway. It just means that you would need more gases. And of course, change up the build. But you could see how the door right here prevents the gases from leaking out. Same with this solid tile. And then from this side, you could see that the oil spilling out is another wall keeping the gases in place. That also means that at the bottom where you're storing the liquid, you cannot over pump. Which is why we actually have the hydro sensor right here. The hydro sensor is quickly set to above 500 kilograms so that the top level never goes below 500 kilograms. This guarantees that we will always have liquids on these six tiles so that the gases never move. So in order for this to actually operate, the gases are the most important part. I would recommend locking the doors. Typically, when you have this design, you would want to fill up the bottom tank um, regardless of the size of it. You want to fill this up first leave the space for the gases, fill up with one type of gas. Typically, you're going to have a gas flying around. You're not going to be in a vacuum. And then you would want to find a second gas. In my case, it's polluted oxygen. Pump it up from another area, transport it via pipeline, and then move one of the gases in. And right here, you could see polluted oxygen CO2. Now, of course, um, you could very easily change how the air full tiles is at the bottom right here. I would not change anything else though. This is basically your neutronium. I would keep that design, but the airflows around it, you could mess around with. Salt water geyser variation for the infinite spill. It's the same thing, CO2 and polluted oxygen on the two tile setup next to the neutronium. And then we put a desalinator right beneath it. This is because a salt water geyser, it's guaranteed to be 95 degrees and the desalinator since it's made out of gold, is at 125. Although this generates heat, it's never going to overheat as it's always submerged in salt water. That's around 95 degrees. So by doing that, this never breaks. And my dupes do have access to climb in in order to remove the salt from the pipelines. And that's how we're modified our infinite spill to add a couple more things inside. Of course, you could always modify how the air flows are. Now over here, we have an example of high pressure of the range that the water can go to with infinite spill. I've had this geyser here spilling in water into the six tiles for about 400 cycles now without any stoppage. Going into the liquid overlay, we're going to be able to see that that's 69 tons 
This is 122 tons. This is 90 tons. This is 90 tons, 90 tons, and 75 tons. As you can see, we also have the hydro sensor there, but this is our water source. So you could very much just put any amount of liquid in. There is a caveat that clay put into place that if any one tile goes past a million kilograms, it resets down to a million. So anything you generate and stockpile over a million is going to get deleted by the game. That's hard coded into the game, I believe, as a measurement to stop some of the infinite pressure designs. But a million kilograms is a lot. So we're going to be far from that. And this is not going to really hurt us. But that is the infinite pressure design, infinite spill. You could also, as you could see here, bottle empty out liquids into side and also make sure to not mop up any of the liquids here so the gases never move. But that's the design. If you guys have any questions, have any ideas, any videos you guys would like to see, please leave a comment down below. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.